we would have to have a general election won by government with in its manifesto a, commis- a, 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 a commitment to hold a referendum, then to hold it and to win it, by the way, which isn't the same thing. And that referendum, I think, for this to be meaningful and sustainable in the context of what has happened, it could not simply be a simple majority of the, of the sort that it was before. It would have to be a supermajority, and I think it would also need to be uh, a supermajority nationally with a simple majority in each constituent nation of the UK. Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. And today we're lucky enough to have as our guest, Professor Chris Gray, who's the Emeritus Professor of Organization Studies at Royal Holloway College. Uh, But he's probably better known to most of the viewers here today um, as a a leading, well, the leading commentator on Brexit since 2016. If you don't read his blog, you're really missing out on something which is eloquent, persuasive and extraordinarily knowledgeable. We're very lucky to have him here with us today. Chris, uh, can I start by asking you um, uh, something that came up in your your blog today and has come up in earlier blogs? Uh, In comparing the attitude to Brexit of the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, you find the the Labour view um, uh, relatively a a little more acceptable. You're not, as I understand it, very enthusiastic about it, but you can see its merits. In particular, you commented recently on a a speech by David Lammy to Chatham House, um, which you found congenial in many ways. Can you tell us a bit about that and comment on one extract from the speech in which he says he wants the UK to be out of the EU, but a leader in Europe once again? Uh, Isn't that just fantasy? Um, Well, first of all, um, thanks, Brendan, for that very generous introduction and and thanks for uh, inviting me on. Um, well, to take the first, the first bit, the, that first, and I mean, certainly what I said on the the blog in relation to the Lamy speech which was that I thought that its significance was in the way that it kind of articulated under this general theme of of his general theme was reconnecting Britain, and it seemed to me that he was spelling out what's what what were two kind of core principles, and one was the sort of necessity and desirability of interdependence of nations. And the other, the inextricable linkage of and therefore need for coherence between foreign and domestic policy and politics. And that, I think, is in very stark contrast to the Brexiters who are still in more or less, I think, outright denial of the complexity and the realities of international interdependence. Um, And also in very kind of convoluted ways. I think they've created a very incoherent relationship between domestic and foreign politics. And what I mean by that primarily is the um, the almost sort of totally unrealistic ideas about what Brexit could mean as articulated domestically and what is actually uh, uh, possible and realistic uh, uh, internationally. And then, you know, I think I said that the, 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 the worst sort of aspect of that is to sort of twist that together and to create a situation where domestic attempts to recognise the reality of international uh, international interdependence become seen as sort of anti-democratic and treacherous, and that really poison politics um, by introducing a whole kind of lexicon of sabotage, betrayal, treachery, traitors, um, uh, enemies of the people, and so on. Um, and it's that as much as anything else, which is that is that as much as the content of Brexit politics, which has made um, Brexit and post Brexit politics really quite different to what we might call the normal politics that, that, that by and large we've experienced in this country um, for many uh, decades. So my my and you were right to call it a qualified in, an enthusiasm for David Damon's speech. Um, but that, that that qualified enthusiasm was basically because I saw that speech as being a repudiation of the central tenets of the Brexit case. And to me, that's the potential first step to the eventual repudiation of Brexit itself. Um, and I think it's the first time since Brexit that anyone has really, any any serving, you know, leading politician um, has really taken that step. Um and, and I suspect, you know, this is something I'm going to say several times in the course of our conversation. Um, but 
so important in my mind to recognise and to be realistic about the way that Brexit has in all kinds of ways taken us very, very low. And so getting back is going to be an enormously long haul. And that's why that first, as I see it, step towards that uh, is an important one. And then on your very specific question about the phrase uh, in the speech outside of the EU, but a leader in Europe once again. Well, um, in the blog post you're referring to, I said that, um, I, I said, quote, like any such speech, there was a lot of aspirational rhetoric. Um, and I think being a leader in Europe once again falls in, into that category. That wasn't particularly a part of the speech that I thought was meaningful or, or, or admirable. But isn't the idea that the United Kingdom can be a leader in Europe um, not merely uh, um, aspirational, it, it, it's actually uh, misleading. Uh, it is to to misrepresent the nature of Brexit, which uh, means that the United Kingdom's position in Europe, on any definition of Europe, is fundamentally compromised. And uh, as long as the Labour Party are failing to face up to that fact, then there's an element of cakeism in, in their approach to the European Union, which is not as bad as, but is comparable to that of the Conservative Party. You know, I suppose. I mean, I'd say that 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 phrase in the speech isn't 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 one that I thought was you know was was, was worth defending, and I didn't think that that for me that wasn't what was important about about you know about the speech. What was important was those was 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 those was those two principles that he um, that 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 the outline. So I, I you know I, I I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to go into that, as it were, for um, for that particular phrase. In, in, but but in how far do you think um, that that a Labour government, um, if it rules out um, rejoining the single car, the um, single market and the commercial customs union, um, will be able to improve the substance of um, uh, EU UK relations as compared to the tone? Um, Lamy says some powerful things about improving the tone, and you echoed them. Um, but what is there in the way of substance that can really be improved, particularly if they're going to insist, uh, as a Labour government says it will, um, on remaining outside of the customs union and the single market? Okay. Well, with, with, I think that, 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 that again, this is about recognising how long the hill is to changing the substance of relations. Uh, and within that, just how low and bad relations um, are with the with with the EU, and, and and actually, I mean, one thing I would say about that is that it wasn't that wasn't even absolutely inherent in Brexit. It was created, um, it was created by the antagonism and the dishonesty uh, with which the Brexit governments uh, conducted themselves from two thousand and sixteen onwards, and and, and just to sort of. You know, you'll all be very familiar with this, but to be, just just to remind ourselves a little bit about how low uh, things sank. That actually, you know, almost from the beginning, do you remember there was this ridiculous episode about uh, people talking about Michael Howard actually talking about you know the idea of going to war with Spain over the question of Gibraltar. Um, I mean, this was only a few. Well, I can't remember if it was a few weeks or perhaps even a few months uh, after the referendum, and in particular, I think an absolutely pivotal moment, which is perhaps forgotten now, but it was pivotal, I think, in poisoning relations with the EU, um, was the way in which the uh, Theresa May government reneged on the stage one agreement in the Article 50 negotiations, almost um, or, or actually within hours uh, of it being agreed in December uh, 2017, I think it was. Um, and then you can go on all the way through the illegal clauses in the Internal Market Bill, um, all the way through to renege on the Northern Ireland Protocol, and, and, and that obviously is still a, a, an ongoing issue. And so, if you view it from that perspective of how um, of, 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 of how antagonistic and sour relations became, and how that's happened over such a long uh, period of years, um, uh, um, uh, in, 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 with the kind of episodes that I've just described, from that perspective, changing the tone is a very big deal. Um, and in that sense, I slightly disagree with the kind of implicit as assumption in the question that changing the tone is sort of superficial and not um, and not actually something which is substantive in its own right uh, and a necessary but certainly not sufficient step towards uh, towards towards what in, in your terms would be substantive uh, improvements. And then, you know, on the other parts of it, I mean, look, I mean, 
at the moment, you know, what we seem to have in prospect is 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 things like various kinds of um, uh, well, firstly, you know, we have in prospect potentially things around kind of dynamic alignment, um, most obviously over um, uh, sanitary and phytosanitary uh, regulations, and that and that kind of thing is, you know, let's say just a way potentially of sanding some of the hard edges of uh, of. Uh, the existing agreement. And by the way, it's worth mentioning that that in particular, SPS uh, dynamic alignment, that isn't cherry picking. I mean, that's something which is already has been is on offer, uh, explicitly on offer from the EU. And that is just an example, but it's also an important example, because one of the things that it then opens the door to is dynamic alignment in relation to other things, if we do it over SPS, then one of other regulations. And, and I think perhaps in, in particular it would be important because to the extent it breaks the ECJ uh, red line, it opens the doors to many other kinds of things by, uh, by which I, or in which I would include um, security, um, data sharing. Because remember, one of the reasons why there isn't substantive security uh, provisions in the TCA is because the Tories had the, 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 the red line on the ECJ, which precludes access to sharing uh, uh, various kinds of databases, and the same would apply not just in security, but to uh, uh, to, to to reach the chemical regulations uh, database, uh, to uh, data sharing on uh, animal health uh, early warning systems. You know, a whole range of kinds of things become uh, opened up um, through that. Now, and they would be real improvements on the TCA. I'm not saying for a minute they would be game changing, and they wouldn't. You know, they wouldn't massively shift the dial on 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 economic damage, but I think it would be facile to dismiss them as as being nothing. And you know, again, it's going to be a long haul, and it's going to need patience. Um, but I think those things are worth doing in their own right. And then to speak perhaps a little bit more to the other part of that of um, you know the, the existing labour red lines on you know on rejoining the EU, but also on 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 single market and also on. Customs uh, Union or Customs Union Treaty. You can't join the Customs Union if you're not an EU member. Um, and, you know, I mean, it, it's very easy to understand what the Labour's strategy and position is here. Um, it's very familiar. Firstly, that they have problems with the extent of the leave vote within their traditional core voter base. Secondly, um, they really don't want to allow the Tories sort of off the their current hook of great on popularity by allowing them to run the general election, the 2024 general election, on a defending Brexit campaign. And thirdly, Brexit, you know, actually isn't necessarily a burning issue for many voters compared with other issues that seem to be higher on uh, their, their their agenda. So there's a danger of, of, of looking out of touch. Um, but I also think that... Um, and I've written about this elsewhere, that the issue is crucially about the viability of rejoining the EU, or for that matter, single market, in the next parliament, because of the possibility of Tory reversal, it, reversing it, um, or even just the threat of doing that. So why even promise to do it in the 2024 parliament when it's not going to be a flyer from if you've got a Tory party standing in the wings saying, well, as soon as we get back into power, we're going to reverse it. In other words, this isn't just about the question of the positioning of particular political parties, or even about the positioning of particular governments. It's about the UK as a polity in its broadest sense, getting to a consensus view. Now, that didn't exist for Brexit. It doesn't exist for Brexit. And we've seen where that leads. But it has to exist for any future uh, major change in the relationship with the, the EU. And you know, you know, a lot of the time in the, in the Brexit discussions, people used um, the kind of metaphor of the golf club. And that was quite a useful one, I think, in terms of trying to explain to people the impossibility of cherry picking and you couldn't have the benefits without being a member and so on. But it's a very misleading metaphor in relation to rejoining, which I think is much more about, you would think of in terms of uh, remarriage um, after a bitter divorce. Now, how could you realistically enter into such a remarriage if... Um, if, as regards the UK polity as a whole, one half of it was saying, yes, we want to get married again, and another saying, well, as soon as we do, we're going to divorce you again. It's completely unrealistic. So from that point of view, I think Labour's policy makes a certain kind of sense. Yeah, but th there are two things to be said about that. One, it's entirely possible that the Conservative Party will suffer such a defeat 
in 2024, um, that it won't be in a position simply five years later to reverse what the Labour Party um, want to do. Um, and secondly, um, uh, proportional representation uh, might, if it was something that Labour introduced, which is not impossible, um, fundamentally shift the, the, the bipolar, the partisan nature of British politics. Um, do you see either of those as being, being relevant considerations? Um, well, the first one, I mean, even if even if the Tories suffer a terrible defeat, that's that's you know, I mean, even if we were to kind of consider a kind of a you know, which might lead to a split, kind of for instance, styles. with the Reform Party, which might lead to a split well, involving the Reform Party. It, it might, it, it might indeed, but that but that doesn't help the scenario that I've set out. In fact, it makes it worse because it would be, 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 be because then you would have a. Um, even if the Reform Party hadn't necessarily got necessarily got many seats, if you've got a strong um, wellspring of uh, pro Brexit, anti EU membership opinion, um, then I think it becomes um, it becomes and and, 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 and therefore what's ha- whatever is happening in terms of Tory seats in parliaments, it is still there in the UK polity as a potent force that you know. Even even granting an electoral wipeout in 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 one election, particularly with the kind of uh, with the um, instability, if you like, of of, of 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 politics, that couldn't you know rule anything out for the following uh, election. And indeed, you know, in the scenario that you're setting uh, setting out, it might even be the prelude uh, to the uh, the the dominant party on the right being something much more. Um, uh, extreme, if you like, and uncompromising in a sort of a, 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 a Farage's mode. Um, the the PR thing is 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 is, is obviously you know more sort of germane in a way to that. It, it doesn't though get around the fundamental thing about. I don't see the possibility of rejoining the EU single market as well, although maybe it's a little bit different. Um, you know, unless you have got, you know, a clear, large and deep consensus within the UK that that's what they want. It's not the the, 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 the standard for rejoining is, is, is not going to be the same as joining the EU, you know, uh, as a country joining the EU, precisely because of the fact that Brexit has happened. Um, and so it seems to me that you've got to get to a situation where you have had you know, very long, and I mean years, of sustained support in the opinion polls for rejoining, and not just at a quantitative level, and by and by and by large and sustained, I mean you know, let, you know, I've got an exact number in mind, but you know, 65, 70 percent, something like that. Um, and because I think there'll always be a bedrock of support for 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 not being in the EU, of you know, which might perhaps be 25, 30 percent, something like that. Um, but it's also got to be um, an actual. Uh, an actual genuine commitment to the EU as an ideal, not a kind of a grudging sort of, oh, well, you know, Brexit has been so awful and we've suffered so much and a sort of transactional kind of, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, dog in the manger kind of slinking, you know, slinking back in because it's been so horrible outside. It needs to be an actual, uh, an actual, uh, you know, an actual qualitative, qualitative change within the UK policy. And I don't see how you get there very quickly. And in particular, I don't see how you get there. uh, Well, I don't see how you get there within a generation. I don't think any of this, you know, well, maybe I've gone on for too long, perhaps you want to come back on some of that. I think that's unduly pessimistic in in the sense that that we've um, we've seen without any political leadership of of any kind um, from the major parties, uh, opinion polls, which have gone very dramatically over the past um, couple of years, you you bring it out in your blog, um, uh, against Brexit, um, and not quite as far in the the direction of wanting to rejoin. Um, But it it doesn't seem to me at all inconceivable that that if there were political leadership along very much the lines that you've been spelling out, I I agree that those are the things that that need to happen in order to make substantial and and solid our our future membership of the European Union. I I don't see why it it shouldn't happen a bit more quickly than than you sketch out. Um, And in particular, uh, I don't see why people shouldn't start 
um, um, putting forward these ideas now um, and hope to be politically effective in exactly the same way UKIP were. Uh, can we perhaps come to that that aspect of yes. the situation? That um, <laughs> is, is there scope? Do you think for a, a political movement that would be largely geared around rejoin? I mean, so I mean, on the latter point, absolutely. I should emphasize this strongly because I know that from that actions that I've had from other people that this when I say this thing about generational it, it seems to be very misunderstood to mean that I'm saying oh well so we just forget about it for now and just wait until it gets sorted out in the future that absolutely is the opposite of what I mean it generational doesn't mean forgetting about it and do nothing it means that if rejoining happens it will need to be built over a generational time period now what is a generation that's a, a, a difficult kind of, of, of question, and there isn't a sort of precise answer, but I would make a few kind of observations about it. What I mean by it is in the time frame 20 to 30 years from 2016. Why? Because that's the kind of time frame in which the 65 plus uh, voting cohort will have, um, uh, well, if you were, if you if you're 65 in 2016, you'd be 85 20 years later. You know, in other words, these people will, those people will be dying out. And no less important, the diehard leaders in politics who have made Brexit their life cause, you know, the Ian Duncan Smiths, the Bill Cashes, the Farages even, you know, they will be off uh, the, uh, the, the, the political scene. And then the people who were 18 to 24, and indeed younger, at the time of the 2016, that will be, uh, that those voters will will will, 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 will be replacing uh, the older voters, and the people who were sort of 30 plus or whatever, at the time of the 2016 referendum, will be in leadership positions. Um, and then in terms of, of so, 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 so that's one way of thinking about generations. But then the other aspect is, you know, is 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 just thinking about um, the general election arithmetic. So to to do rejoining, and by the way, I, I, I would like to come back if we have time to say, I think that rejoining is increasingly the wrong way of framing it. And I think that it should, it would be better to frame it in terms of, in terms of joining, but anyway, I'll maybe come back to that. But we would have to have a general election won by a government with, in its manifesto, a, commis- a, 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 a commitment to hold a referendum, then to hold it and to win it, by the way, which isn't the same thing. And that referendum, I think, for this to be meaningful and sustainable in the context of what has happened, it could not simply be a simple majority of the, of the sort that it was before. It would have to be a supermajority, and I think it would also need to be uh, a supermajority nationally with a simple majority in each constituent nation of the UK. Because we couldn't conceivably have a situation, well, it would be mad to create a situation where potentially such a referendum went 52 to 48 in favour of rejoining, and perhaps actually with a, with a, only a minority support for, re, for, 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 for rejoining in, 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 in England. Um, uh, sorry, without a majority for rejoining in England. Um, and, you know, I mean, that would be a crazy proposition for the country. It would be a crazy proposition for the uh, European Union. And anyway, it's not on offer in 2024, unless there's a massive change of heart by the Labour Party. That's not in offer in 2024. So the earliest it's on offer is 2029. Um, and then you get a, ref- a referendum about 2031, maybe rejoining in 2033, because there'd have to be an accession um, negotiation process. And so that's the very quickest, that's the very quickest gets us to rejoin in 2033. But more likely, it needs the Tories to be defeated twice for their, their, their Brexit, I don't know what you want to call it, but their, their Brexitism to be, uh, to, be, uh, to, uh, to be expunged, which, you know, is a, it, it would, would be a big change for the Tory party, but it would be likely to happen, perhaps for demographic uh, reasons. And so then we perhaps get to 2034 general election, 2036 referendum, 2038 rejoin, and maybe longer. But I mean, that I think is, 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 and of course, once you get into those kinds of time frames, you know, predictions and scenarios become very, very, very difficult to, um, uh, um, uh, to make. But that I think is, 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 and I understand, of course, you know, the impatience of, 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 of people about this. Um, but there's no point, I think, in 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 being unrealistic about it. And just finally, on the thing about joining versus rejoining, um, 
The problem with rejoining is that it's automatically configured in terms of reversal of Brexit, and in, and therefore, almost by definition, imminent or, or, or implicit within it is a refight of 2016. But 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 but, but I think the argument here should be to, which should, should be to, should be to say, you know, and the further we get away from 2016, the more we should configure in terms of joining. Why? Because it will be a different UK. It will have to be a different UK. It will certainly be a different EU, and it will be a different world. And so configure it in, in terms of a going back to something is, I think, going to become increasingly um, um, irrelevant, but also unhelpful. Would there be a UK in 2031 if we um, haven't reversed Brexit before then? Well, obviously, you know, I mean, I completely used to kind of take that point and, 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 and you know, if 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 we get a Scottish independence referendum and if independence wins, which and those are both kind of big ifs, uh, then obviously you could envisage Scotland both leaving the UK and then itself joining the EU. You could clearly envisage within that time frame um, Northern Ireland rejoining the EU by virtue of reunification uh, of uh, Ireland. Wales, I suppose, is a bit less less less. Uh, it's not so clear. I think what you to kind of um, uh, say about that. And so, of course, then that presents you know another kind of scenario, which is to the extent that Brexit support was strongest uh, in England, then the then the then then, then, then the prospects of of England uh, uh, joining the EU, are, you know, obviously require a, a, you know that much more, if you like, of a sort of a shift. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so, yes, of course, that's another another layer of complexity. And I, I was going to ask you as a final question, something I've hinted at a moment ago, uh, this question of, of political activity. Um, what do you think is the, the best political activity, the most effective political activity for people who want to bring about the rejoining by the UK of the European Union as soon as possible, wherever on the timeline that you sketched out, sketched out that that may happen? I mean, what I just first say this is, is that is that one of the reasons that I know that in this conversation I'm I'm you know, I'm the pessimist as it were I suppose you know or something like that but 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 but, but just think for a moment that if if the argument is to say well we want to get it as quickly as possible we might argue you should say well you should be careful what you wish for because if it gets to that point too soon and you get a referendum too early that ends up not being won. That's it. That's game over, right? <laughs> you know, really, um, uh, and equally, you know, if, if you if you haven't embedded a a a, a sustainable um, uh, a sustainable basis for being in the EU, being in the EU, then you haven't solved the problem. Because, by the way, one of the things that we learned from the, should have learned from the Brexiters is it's not enough to win the vote. You have to know how to do it. Yeah, and that means knowing how to be an EU member, right? And that's a new kind of thing. Okay, so, so that's that. So in other words, I'm saying that the people who are the most keen on the UK being um, a member of the EU and a full and participating in the leading you know, voice of Europe yeah. or whatever it was, that said, um, if that's what people want, then actually maybe they shouldn't hope to do it too quickly because the best hope of getting to what they want is to do it more slowly. So that's the first thing. But then, but then to, 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 to respond um uh despite that and, and even if all of that is wrong then the answer to that is undoubtedly um that the best hope is a hung parliament uh, it, it, this had to come electorally the best hope is a hung parliament in the 2024 election uh, and a labor led administration with lib dem perhaps green smp support might be a bit more more unlikely but you know um but 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 but, but, uh, but so 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 a situation where the where a minority Labour administration was dependent upon uh, more um, uh, more more um, uh, 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 less cautious uh, uh, um, uh, parties with respect to uh, the EU um, and because you know I mean for example Starmer the other day 
use the phrase, it's not, uh, the, uh, there's no political case for rejoining the single market. And it's interesting that he said political, he didn't say economic. Now, you could envisage a situation where, dependent on Lib Dem votes, he says, uh, well, now uh, there is a political case. And, uh, uh, you know, yeah, it's been, it, 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 you know. Um, so, so, so therefore, that would then mean, depending on the constituency that you're in, it would mean either, uh, you know, voting Labour or voting Lib Dem or, you know, uh, or, or, or green and so on, um, and um, uh, yeah, so that would be the the your answer. Well, answer. An answer. well, thank you very much indeed. We're running out of time, and we could we could go on for another twenty minutes. Well, I certainly could, but um, I'm sure you've got other things to do. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you to everyone who's been um, been watching us. The Federal Trust does a number of such videos on 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 Brexit, and we hope you'll go to our website to to consult them. Um, best wishes to all of you who've um, followed us up till now, and best wishes to you, Chris. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Thanks a lot.